Elon wants to colonize Mars, billionaires want cities up there, and sci-fi movies make it look like it's just a matter of time. But here's the truth no one talks about. Building on Mars isn't just about rockets or robots, it's about surviving in a place where even concrete cracks, metal freezes, and there's dust finer than flour trying to kill your tech. Just like many construction and engineering nerds, we're diving deep into what it would actually take to build on Mars. The materials, methods, the massive engineering challenges, and yes, the terrifying unknowns. Let's start with the basics. Mars is trying to kill you. Temperatures average minus 63 degrees Celsius. The atmosphere, 96% carbon dioxide. Gravity, only 38% of Earth's. Oh, and there's radiation. A lot of it. You can't just pour concrete, swing some beams around, and call it a day. Every single method we use on Earth has to be re-engineered. Even bolts and welds behave differently under extreme cold and low gravity. Windstorms on Mars won't blow your house down, but the dust will eat your electronics and clog your filters. Think ultra-fine, electrostatically charged, and razor-sharp. Imagine drywall dust on steroids. Yeah, something like that. Here's the big question. What materials can we use on Mars? Shipping stuff from Earth is insanely expensive, up to $10,000 plus per kilogram. That's why engineers are working on in-situ resource utilization, using what's already on Mars. So what's on Mars? Regolith bricks. You can heat Martian soil into bricks kind of like sintered ceramic. Sulfur concrete, mix Martian regolith with sulfur, no water needed, or 3D printed ice domes. Some scientists envision 3D printed ice domes as a way to build habitats. Ice on Mars? Believe it or not, it's more than just science fiction. Thanks to Mars's freezing temperatures and thin atmosphere, ice can remain stable, especially if structures are built underground or in shadowed regions. And since ice can block deadly radiation, it could serve as both shelter and shield. But there's a catch. Ice sublimates in low pressure, so we'd have to get creative with insulation and structure reinforcement. NASA and ESA are already testing these on Earth analog sites like deserts and lava tubes. You can't just send a bunch of workers with hard hats to Mars, so how do you build? There are three possible and feasible ways. Number one, robotic construction. Autonomous rovers and printers lay down materials ahead of humans. Before the first astronaut steps foot on Mars, someone, or something, has to prepare the ground. And no, we're not talking about humans in bulky suits swinging hammers. We're talking about robots. Imagine autonomous machines, digging, printing, and assembling entire habitats, in total silence under a Martian sky, months or even years before a human ever sets foot there. Why robots first? Because Mars is lethal. The radiation, cold, and lack of breathable air make it absurdly expensive to send humans for construction. Robots? They don't need food, water, or oxygen. Just a mission plan and power. NASA and private companies are already developing autonomous construction bots that could operate with minimal human input, capable of surveying terrain, 3D printing structures, installing power systems, even managing their own maintenance via drone support. Number two, inflatable habitats, lightweight, compact, then inflated and reinforced on site. Now imagine you land on Mars and instead of building a shelter from scratch, you unroll, inflate, and step inside your base within hours. Sounds like a sci-fi tent, right? But it's real. Mars missions are extremely mass limited. Every kilogram costs thousands of dollars to launch. So the solution? Ship something lightweight, compact, and expandable. That's exactly what inflatable habitats are. Again, NASA and private companies have been testing this idea for years. Number three, subsurface shelters, going underground to survive. Lava tubes and underground digs protect from radiation. But what if we didn't have to build from scratch at all? What if Mars had ready-made shelters already protected from radiation, meteorites, and temperature swings? Wait, did you know that Mars has ancient lava tubes? Massive hollow tunnels left behind by volcanic activity. Unlike Earth's, they could be tens of meters wide and kilometers long, big enough to house entire settlements. 
These tubes offer natural shielding from almost everything that makes Mars deadly. Scouting missions. Robots map the tubes using LiDAR, radar, and optical scanning. Modular insertions. We send prefabricated pressurized rooms that slide into the tubes and lock together. Natural insulation. The regolith above provides radiation protection equivalent to meters of lead shielding. In short, lava tubes could become the Martian equivalent of bunkers. Fortified, secure, and temperature stable. In the end, the most out there idea might be the most realistic. When we colonize Mars, we may not be living in glass domes, but inside the planet itself. And let's not forget that assembly on Mars will be more like precision surgery than a standard construction job. You mess up a seal or crack a dome. You're not just behind schedule, Knight. You're risking lives. Here's the cold, red reality. Radiation. Mars has no magnetic field or ozone layer. You need two to three meters of shielding or your toast. Dust infiltration. Every system must be sealed, pressurized, and dust resistant. Thermal cycling. Day-night swings of 100 degrees Celsius stress materials like crazy. Psychological isolation. Construction teams need not just physical safety, but mental resilience. These aren't just inconveniences. These are mission critical risks. So why even try? Why build on Mars at all? Well, Mars got somehow something better than the Earth we live in. Lower gravity means you can build bigger domes with less structural support. Abundant CO2 can be turned into fuel and oxygen. Solar power is plentiful, and if we crack fusion or nuclear mini-reactors, we're golden. Mars also gives us a fresh start. We can design infrastructure from scratch without legacy systems or red tape. So, can we build on Mars? Technically, yes. Realistically, not without solving a hundred many challenges first, but every test we do on Earth, every Mars rover and every prototype habitat brings us one step closer. And if you're someone who's fascinated by engineering problems that matter, then this is the ultimate frontier. Because colonizing Mars isn't just science fiction, it's the most extreme construction project ever imagined. And it might happen sooner than you think. Subscribe for more real engineering in action.